Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Um, spring's heating up and everybody's getting their tractors and planters hooked up. And this is the time where, you know, they're trying to, you know, see if they have any problems or anything to try to get those things fixed before they go to the field. Here we got a uh, 8RT370, you know, customers complaining that uh, it has rough shifting between going forward and reverse or vice versa. So let's check it out. Got a 1775 NT high speed planter on this unit. Side tanks. 8RT 370. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. Get everything booted up. Feels fine to me. I'm gonna check this thing for codes. Nothing that would explain hard shifting yet. Yeah, TCM needs calibrated. That's no big deal. Huh. I'm gonna operate this thing some more. I mean, maybe just a little bit of a clunk. But I mean, if I control the clutch well with my foot, I don't feel like it does it that much. I'm gonna try not clutching it. Forward. Reverse. tried playing with the, the auto clutch sensitivity um, it definitely gets worse when I go high or off but it seems to be the smoothest there in low okay well I didn't really find anything wrong with that tractor other than his reverse start gear so the gear that is selected when you put first put the shift lever in reverse was set to third um, so it's, it's, it has, takes a little bit more power, you know, to engage third gear as a start gear. So I told him to change it to two, see if that made it any better. Um, but I have recently calibrated that transmission, uh, I don't know, I think like 200 hours ago on that engine. So, um, I'm just going to let him run this spring. And then if it, um, if he thinks it needs calibration, um, it'd be a lot easier to do when the tractor's in the field. 
um, when the transmission's warmed up and the oil's good and hot, it won't take that long to calibrate it then. So we're just gonna do that for now. Um, I went back to the shop and I did get the broken extractor out of the combine. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys how I did that after a while. And then um, I did break another bolt in the 6400 and then I broke the extractor off in that. So I'm just on a roll breaking extractors. I mean, I break like one or two a year, maybe. And I broke two in less than a week. So I, I don't know what my problem is there, but uh, anywho, now we're going on a two and a half hour drive um, to look at a 7200R. It's in Earlville, wherever that is. I've never been there before, so it's a new customer. Um, it's like straight west of Chicago. So phone says two and a half hour drive. So I got the, the fab fueled up here and I'm just gonna drive up there and rock out to some tunes and maybe listen to the Certified Wrench podcast. So let's uh, get this drive under our belt and then we'll see what's wrong with the 7200. there she is I made it here that was a jaunt so here we got a 7200R you know the reason why I drove this far is we just sold this tractor to the customer so you know any problems that come up we're responsible for so we want to make sure we take care of this guy so the reason why he called is the the coolant level says that it's low but he says the tank's full so might have a problem with the level switch and he says the ac is not working correctly he says it's not blowing cold at all so let's check that out well i got my gauges hooked up to it and we don't have enough pressure to kick the compressor off so now we need to look for leaks okay well i started checking the the ac lines from back here at the cab all the way to the compressor and the compressor is leaking for sure um, didn't see any other leaks on the AC system besides the, the compressor um, luckily I did bring a compressor with me um, so we can swap that guy out pretty easily it's just got a you know the, the front accessory drives at the very very front there's a drive shaft that comes from the crank that comes underneath the cooling package and runs all this so um, we can fix that that's not a big deal um, the coolant tank is actually low it's like levels like right here at the bottom so I was kind of unprepared for that the customer said that it was full but saying that it was low so I was thinking a level switch well it's actually low so I started checking it for coolant leaks and found one here this upper radiator hose it's seeping out of the clamp on the upper radiator hose and I found another leak over here on the side right there this hose clamp hose connection there is leaking so I don't have any of those parts with me so I'm just gonna hope we can tighten those clamps up and clean that off and run this thing and just hope it doesn't leak out anymore and get that coolant tank topped off so that's what we got going on now all right it's windy as heck outside i can't open this door without getting 70 mile an hour winds blowing in here so i'm leaving my truck outside and just you know going back and forth to get tools and whatnot but uh i got the clamps tightened up on the upper radiator hose and that other coolant hose over on the right hand side um, hopefully it doesn't leak after that because i don't have any of those parts with me um, so right now i've got my vacuum pump hooked up to my gauges and we're going to back this thing down since it doesn't have any refrigerant pressure we don't have anything to evacuate essentially so um, we'll get it back down and then i'll just remove and replace this ac compressor and the receiver dryer and flush the line if I need to um, 
I don't think, you know, it's not a compressor failure. You know, there's no noise or anything coming from the compressor. So we don't have to worry about metal contaminants or anything like that. So um, we'll just get the uh, compressor and the receiver dryer replaced. Um, we'll clean up the coolant so we know if it's leaking anymore. And we'll top off the, the tank on here and then we'll run it for a while and see what happens. It's my good old Harbor Freight vacuum pump. I've had it for five or six years and she just keeps on a sucking. So we're gonna see if this thing will hit, hit the target vacuum I wanna go for. I want that needle to hit 30 inches of vacuum, but uh, it may not with that compressor leaking like that, but we'll see. So I, could, I just back it down for about a minute or so, turn that off. Now if we had a leak in the system, like a bad leak, like we had a bad o-ring on a line or something, you know, it's going to suck air, so then we're going to lose vacuum. You're going to see that needle move, but the needle's not moving at all. So I think we're probably all right there. I don't back it down for the final vacuum, you know, right before I take the AC compressor off. I'm just basically getting, making sure there's no refrigerant pressure in the system. And so we can take the lines off the compressor here. So talk about an easy compressor to replace. So take the belt off, two lines, and what, three bolts in the connector, swap it out, put new O-rings on my lines, plop them back in. And then the receiver dryer is the tricky part, I think, because they tucked it into here. So might be a little tricky getting that guy out, but uh, I'll manage it, get that replaced. I mean, this, this is a 6.8 liter IT4 engine, and it is just five pounds of crap in a two pound bag in this tractor. Well, I got the new compressor on that literally took me like five minutes. It was just stupid easy to replace. I bet you automotive guys wish your AC compressors were that easy to replace. But uh, got the new one on there. Now we got to do the receiver dryer. That's going to be the more challenging aspect. Well, I got that guy out four-way angle wrenches from Snap-on for the win, plus my Milwaukee extended reach ratchet to get this bolt out here. But, uh, I just, you know, drop it all over the floor, but whatever, that's trash anyway. And I just put that clamp, take this clamp off, put it on a new one, get the new one bolted up in there, get new O-rings on the lines, put the lines on, and then um, once that's complete, then we can go ahead and back the system down and then charge it. Okay, the receiver dryer's done. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. You can get in there with wrenches to get those lines on and off, but uh, the four-way angle really helps because those wrenches are a little shorter um, to get more throw in there. So, got that done. Now we just gotta back it down and charge it. She's holding a good vacuum. Now I've got uh, my refrigerant on a scale right there. We've got the tank upside down because we're going to crank as much liquid into this thing as possible because it's really cold in here. I think it's only like 45 degrees. So um, we'll get as much liquid in there as possible. we got to put four pounds in the system. So I'll statically charge it with liquid as much as I can. And then we'll flip it over so we can suck gas into the low side with the engine running to top it off until we get four pounds on the scale there. So open up her valves. So almost got a pound in it. Three more to go. I was able to get 2.7 pounds in it, so got the tank flipped back around. Gonna open up the low side. I'm just going to show 
shut this valve off. You want to add it into the low side because that's the side it's sucking from. You don't want to put it in the high side, so you always open up your low side valve. Got four pounds in it. Got it shut off. So I'm gonna shut the engine off. All right, well, I got it running. It ain't leaking anymore, no more coolant leaks. Everything's dried up. Um, I got the coolant tank filled back up and uh, the AC's working good. So I'm just gonna shield this thing back up because I gotta hit the road because I gotta play drums tonight. All right, got another satisfied customer and uh, time to hit the road, drive two and a half hours back. Um, had a suggestion from subscriber, you know, to have a, a jam of the day. So I'm gonna give you guys a jam of the day and that's gonna be uh, Only Human by Memphis May Fire. Uh, it's got uh, AJ from Fire From The Gods singing on there as well. Check it out, it's a good jam. All right, we got another satisfied customer. Now I'm on the road, we gotta drive two and a half hours back. I had a subscriber suggest that I should do a, a jam of the day. Well, I'm gonna give you guys a jam. And that's Only Human by Memphis May Fire. It's got AJ singing on it as well from Fire From The Gods. Uh, it's a killer jam, you guys should check it out. All right, well we made it back from Chicagoland and uh, this is the next day I've been working in the shop all day and give you guys a little update on the 6400 here. Okay, we're back at the shop. Um, yesterday I spent all day working on this 6400 engine and got a lot done so far. Um, I went ahead and upgraded from the composite timing cover to the aluminum timing cover. Um, the bottom of the composite cover it had brass threaded inserts in them and they were getting pulled out so it wasn't going to seal correctly on the oil pan um, so when you order a new timing cover you get an aluminum one and a different style gasket so i think that's going to work a lot better got the timing cover on got the oil pan on um, the water pump and thermostat housing i'm still waiting on one thermostat coming from germany um, got the water pump on and then, you know, the entire accessory drive, AC compressor, alternator, all that stuff. Got the fan. Um, got a new fan clutch on there because that other one was weak. Um, got the radiator just sitting in here for now. Um, I think today I'm going to get the hydraulic cooler sitting in here. And I think I'm going to wait to put the sides on until I get this thermostat in. I might have to reuse one of them. I've got one thermostat, it takes two, um, because this customer is gonna need this tractor to plant plots with. So um, I've got this cylinder reconditioned, steering cylinder. Um, I decided to leave it in the tractor and just pull it out and just pull the ram out and rebuild the cylinder because you have to take this whole entire knee off here if you wanna disconnect the base of the cylinder. So I thought I'd sneak it out and recondition it in, in the tractor and it actually works. So um, I still got to do the other side. Um, I did a rocker cover gasket. And of course the first bolt I take out just snaps off and then ended up breaking a stupid extractor off in it. Um, but I used that rotary tool with a rotary diamond cutting bit and just kept eating that screw extractor down, 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 down. Eventually, I got to where I could push the extractor through the end of the bolt, and then I could hog out the rest of the bolt. And then I used a left-handed drill bit um, and got the uh, the bolt finally broke free with the left-handed bit and got that out, got the hole retapped, put all new bolts in. So that's done, but it takes probably an hour sometimes to drill through one of those extractors with that bit but i did get a new bit um, and i'll show you guys that here later it's actually meant for drilling screw extractors all right so i got this rescue bit off of amazon and i don't know if you can see it or not if i can get the camera to focus but it's actually got a a drilling tip 
on it. And it kind of looks like a, a single cut burr bit, but this is actually designed to cut through screw extractors, um, broken taps, drill bits, and more. So I guess I'm gonna give this guy a try whenever I need to use that next. So, and it says to call this guy before you use this bit. So I'm gonna call this guy up and just kind of pick his brain because I've never seen anything like this before. And my dad is actually a, a tool and die maker and he hasn't even heard of this before and he's thinking about getting some for his machine shop. So I guess we're gonna give that a whirl, see how that works. All right, and on the combine, I did get that broken bolt and extractor out by drilling it out with the, the rotary diamond bits and carbide burr bits. But uh, I got it to where that, that was all that was left. And then I took a punch and I drive it through the bolt the rest of the way. And then I was able to turn this out with a left-handed drill bit, it came right out. And then I re-tapped the hole now I gotta install a new rocker box bolt in there and then that'll be done. Then I can get the the pipe on in between the turbos and now and then I'll be able to start and run this engine. Alright, well that's gonna do it for this episode of ZK Master Tech. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, the next project I might do might be in the field, might be in the shop. I don't know. We'll just have to see what comes up. But until next time, keep that green iron moving.